Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for joining us. And I am very pleased to bring uh, the word of God to you. Uh, we have been running a, a series now. This is about the fourth week um, on earnest expectations, active expectations, great expectations. And today, I want to encourage you to expect to be healed right now. <laughs> be expectant to be healed right now because God is going to touch you. God is going to bless you. God is going to reach you. God is going to listen to your prayers today. And by his grace, by his grace and an anointing upon my life, I am going to release that blessing upon you. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you to have faith, you know, to have faith in God today because today is the end of that long wait, of that long expectation, long hoping that you have been doing. Today, the Lord is going to finally answer you. Hallelujah. All right. I will be taking my Bible reading from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Ephesians 6, verse 13 to 17. Um, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shield with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, this is a picture, a graphic picture of uh, a soldier, a strong, victorious soldier. And this is uh, a picture of who a Christian is. This is a picture of who Christians like you should be. Well kitted. Your faith is high. Your expectations are great. You know the truth. You know the word of God. You have your sword. Everything, you are complete. You are aggressive. You are offensive. You are well protected. But is that the truth? Is that what you experience? Is that what you see in the lives of all the Christians? It's far from it. So you can really see that faith of many Christians have been badly wounded. Yes, some are wounded. Some are crippled spiritually. Some, some are actually, you know, in a coma spiritually. Their faith is totally gone. As a result of many battles in life, they have fought, they have prayed, they have done all sorts, and it's as if they are not receiving the breakthroughs that they expect. And so over time, their faith 
have been weakened. They are no longer active for God. So any, every time you talk about healing, they are like, oh, we have been there. We know. You know. So I don't know if your faith is the wounded today or the faith of someone you know in your family is weak today. But I want to encourage you, don't give up because delay is not forever. Do not give up. My message to you today from God is don't give up. Yes, you may have experienced delays, but I want you to know if your hope is in God, your delay is not forever. God is not always late. It's not always late. Your helper, which is God, is very, very close to you. The Bible says God is a present help in times of trouble. It's a close help in times of trouble. When your faith is weak, don't think that God is far from you. He's with you. And this is the word of God that is coming to someone. This is the word of God for you. God is telling you, he's saying, trust my timing. The days of completion are mine, not yours. I will complete my work in you in my perfect timing. Even as my ways are perfect, so my timing is perfect. For you have said, it seems I am standing still and going nowhere. But I say over you, I am unfolding my glory upon you, even as you wait on me. I will make it happen and will show you my perfection. What often feels like an endless season of waiting is often a time of preparation. You must believe in things you cannot see. You must trust that even when things seem silent, I am working on your behalf. If you judge my faithfulness by what you see, you aren't placing your faith in me at all. Faith believes despite the obvious. It remains tapped into me. So focus on the promises that I made unto you. Don't let go of those promises. Beloved, don't doubt my love or faithfulness because it is taking longer than expected. Stir yourself up to believe again. Dig your heels in. Take a deep breath and trust my timing. I hope that word from God is for someone that is watching now. That is for you. So you may think that your wait is going to be forever. No. I want to also encourage you to believe right now. Because God's timing is now. From the scripture. God's promises are for today. Today. His time is always today. Today, the Bible says in Hebrews 4 verse 7, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. That means don't delay. Don't postpone it. If you delay the acceptance of God's promises, you may not be alive tomorrow. The promises of God belong to to us today. The promises of God belong to us today. And we are not sure of them any other time. The only way to be sure of God's promised blessing is to accept his time. And we read in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. It says, behold, now is the accepted time. Now. So, since now is the 
time God has set. Since now is the time that God has set, we should accept it as our time also. God is ready to do something now. God is doing something now. God is healing right now. So don't say, I have been there before. I have been to many services before. I have been to big, big crusades before. I am telling you now, God's time for you is now. And the only thing I am trying to encourage you to do is to believe it that it is now. And you will get it now. And that puts an end to your hoping. Because hope is always in the future, but faith brings it now. So he commands us to hear his voice today. And he says, harden not your heart by waiting. In Mark 11 verse 24, Jesus said, believe that you receive. That is literally take it. When? Now. When you pray, the Bible says, when you pray, believe that you have received now. So faith says, before the answer is manifested, you will say, Lord, thank you. Father, I thank you that thou hast heard me. Just the way Jesus prayed before he went to the tomb of Lazarus. So when you cannot see or feel anything, or when all you feel is the pain and the sickness and failures, say to yourself, this is the time to trust God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I want you to know that your hope will not disappoint you. In Romans 5 verse 5, the Bible says, and hope does not disappoint us. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hope does not fail. Hope will not put you to shame, especially when your hope is in God. Hope in man may fail. Hope in man may be forever, but when your hope is in God, you will not be disappointed. It will not put to shame, put you to shame. You think you, you think you think you will be put to shame? No. Today you will not be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. But I want you, I want to push you up a bit to move from hoping to faith. As I said, faith puts an end to hoping. In Hebrews 1, verse 1, you will see that he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. See, see, now faith is a substance. So faith brings substance. It brings evidence. It brings uh, something tangible to your hope. Hallelujah. I hope you are getting it. That is the definition of faith. Faith is the substance aspect of your hoping, the things you have not seen, but faith makes it to materialize. Faith turns the invisible to visible. And if you look at that word very well, it says now faith. So there is a faith that is now. So a now faith will bring what is in the spiritual to the physical. It brings it. Your faith, a now faith is a bridge between the spiritual and the physical. Hope, there may not be bridge. It's there. Heaven is there. The world is here. Answer is there. Your request is here. But faith bridge together. And you're happy. You say, yes, I have received. So faith is the element of speed that drives your expectations faster to meet your answers. Hallelujah. So watch out for the enemies of faith. Your enemies of faith or the enemies of faith are your senses. There is 
a sense knowledge. And there is the knowledge of the word of God, a spiritual knowledge. Be careful of how you feel, your feelings. They are your enemies. So what you see is the enemy of faith. Hearing is the enemy of faith. They don't work together. So you may still be feeling the pain now, right now. What you are seeing is, is, is real, it's obvious. What you have been told, the doctor's report, it looks real. You have been to the scan, you have seen it. This is what the scanner has seen in your body. That is sense knowledge. But faith is different. Your faith is in the word of God. What has God said about your situation? Which report would you believe? They don't work together. But because we are humans, we try to allow our senses to dominate our faith. But I want to encourage you right now and for the rest of your Christian life, don't let your senses dominate. Don't let your senses overrule or cancel out your faith in the word of God. Hallelujah. Gather momentum to believe again. Believe today. Believe right now. God does not kill his soldiers and children. This is, this is contrary to what you have been taught, but it is there in the word of God. God will nurse and nurture his wounded children and soldiers and make them fit again to fight. The Americans, they, they, they are soldiers, the Marines. Do you know how much they spend on one Marine? That is why when they go to far places to go and fight, no matter whether they are wounded or dead, they make sure they bring them back home. When they are, another soldier will, will, will prefer to die for another soldier who is already dead because they will not leave them in the battlefield. They want to bring them back. How much more God? So wherever your faith is weak today, God is bringing you out. He will now see you. In Matthew 12, verse 20, the Bible says, He won't break a bruised reed. He won't quench a smoking flax until he leads justice to victory. What is a reed? A reed in the scripture is a symbol of weakness. If you take the look, I mean, a look at the book of Ezekiel 29, verse 6, it signifies that state of weakness that borders on, on death and dissolution. It's like you're finished. It's like that, that is the symbol of a reed. What about the smoking flax? It says the smoking flax, God will not quench. It means the wick of a lamp and is intended to point out its expiry state. You know, when the, the small wick there is finished burning because the oil in, in the lamp has finished, is burnt, is burnt away. You know, it just remains once, once you touch, touch it, 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 you know, it just disappears. It's destroyed. But the Bible says, if your faith is as weak as that, you are burnt out. Your faith is burnt out. You have tried. You don't have strength in you anymore. Don't think that God will worsen your matter. You think God will say, you don't have faith, go to hell. Die and go. You are defeated. No. The Bible says, no, he will not do that. God is encouraging you now. If you don't have anything left in you, if your grace, your faith has been snuffed out completely by the enemy, the Bible is encouraging you. The word of God for you today in Hebrews 12, verse 12, the Bible says, Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. They may have been amputated by the enemy. The Bible says, strengthen them. Verse 13 says, make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather be healed. Be healed. Wherever you are wounded, healing is for you today. God is touching you. Some of you, you have been disappointed, even by church people. That's why you don't want to go to church again. Some you have backslid. You don't even want to hear about God again. God is encouraging you now.
God is encouraging you now. Don't remain on the ground. Gather momentum. Believe once more again. Right now, the situation is going to change. God has promised to heal wherever you have been wounded. Look at it. The book of Psalms, 103, 1 to 5. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 3, Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Verse 5, Who satisfies the mouth with good things? so that thy youth or strength is renewed like egos. Now, God forgives all your sins. If you have sinned and you think God can never forgive you again, the Bible says God forgives all your sins. Today, be forgiven. You are forgiven. Stand up and go back to God again. If you have not given your life to God, it is time for you to say, God, I want to start a relationship with you. Forgive me my sins because he's ready to forgive you now. But second part says, God heals all your diseases. So there's nothing that is going to remain. There's no pain that's going to remain in your body right now. Verse 5 says, so that your youth, that means your strength, is renewed like ego. God is ready to renew your strength to be like the ego strength. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5 Verse 23 says that he is the savior of the body. Can you imagine? Jesus is the savior of the body. So you can confess and put your trust in Jesus that he will save your body from any ailment right now. Exodus 23, verse 25, the Bible says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sicknesses away from the midst of you. Did I say that? It is God. God says, I will take sicknesses away from the midst of you, from your family, from your body. Why won't you believe that? Why won't you, will you believe the negative thing that the doctor has said to you? Why don't you believe what God has just said now? In Deuteronomy 7 verse 15, the Bible says, And the Lord will take away from thee all sicknesses. The Lord will take it away and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you know upon you, including the plague. The Bible says God will take all sicknesses away. And that is exactly what is going to happen to you right now. Jeremiah 30 verse 17, he says, For I will restore health unto you, and I will heal thee of your wounds, says the Lord. Says Titus. No, says the Lord. I will restore health to you. So health is being restored to you right now. Right now, receive it in the name of Jesus. You are being healed of your wounds in Jesus' name. Matthew 8, verse 16 to 17. Matthew 8, 16 to 17. When the evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his words and healed all that were sick. Everybody that was sick healed. And so you are watching me right now. You are sick anywhere all over the world or you watch later and you are sick in your body. You are healed in Jesus name because this is the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God will be health to your flesh. God's word is medicine to your flesh. And that is what you are hearing now. It's coming to your body and it's, it's become a medicine to you. The Bible says, and the word was made flesh. The word comes into you, it goes into your flesh and begin to do exactly the what you have taken in, which is healing, which is wholeness, which is health, which is restoration. And the Bible says in verse 17, it says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. The Lord himself, Jesus, when he died on the cross, there were two things he did. One is to forgive sin. The second one 
is to heal your body. It is the same death that did this too. The same death. <laughs> the Bible says, he himself took our infirmities, that is, diseases. When he was on the cross, that is what he took there. Then he carried our sicknesses. What he has carried away from your body, is it still there? It's not there. Don't let your senses begin to tell you lies. It's not there. Hold on to, word of God, to the word of God. What he has done for you, with no time, you begin to experience healing and wholeness in your body. Matthew 9, lastly, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And guess what? Healing every sickness and every disease among the people. What else do you want? This is what Jesus did. And is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He healed before, he's still healing now, and he's going to heal you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm sure your faith is fired up, and your faith is now. You ready to pray? Let us pray. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and say, Father, please forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. The sins, oh God, that may have caused this sickness that puts me into this mess, please forgive me. I repent today and accept you as my Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you now. That's your healing. Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you. Your word is yes and it is amen. Your word is quick and it is powerful. It has gone into the lives of of your children. It has entered into their body. It has entered into their blood. It has entered into their bone marrows. It has entered into their heart, even into their thoughts. Father, and is working healing right now in the name of Jesus. And that word is Jesus. Jesus has gone into your body and is working now. Is working healings in your body. And I so I decree and I declare, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. That pain in your neck, out in Jesus' name. That pain in your back, I command you to live right now in the name of Jesus. Those noise in your head, I command them to stop today in the name of Jesus. Any terminal disease that is in your body, I destroy it and I cast it out. In the name of Jesus, let the blind see. Let the lame walk. In the name of Jesus, let those, oh God, who are barren be fruitful. In the name of Jesus, every part of your body, I submerged it now in the precious blood of Jesus. And I ask that the Spirit of God and His stripes move through your body and produce healing. In the name of Jesus. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. The expectant is happening right now. Begin to do what you have not been able to do before and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Your expectation shall not be cut off. God bless you. Thank you. Amen.